Talia there champs and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be reviewing the very controversial new MacBook Pro 15 inch. Now throughout this review I will be comparing it to its main competitor which would be the XPS 15 here because a lot of people from the Apple side and people have been going crazy like I'm talking full on Apple Mac fanboys they're not happy with the new MacBook Pro and I'll just compare it to its main competitor to give you an idea of what you're going to get if you get a Windows machine compared to the MacBook Pro. Now first of all I'd just like to say in the past 10 years I've owned more Macs than PCs that's a fact. I've had five Macs I believe and I've had four PCs, two desktops and two laptops. So a lot of people call me Apple fanboy, PC fanboy, I get called every kind of fanboy. Now that to me tells me that I'm balanced because if I'm getting called a fanboy of every product out there that means obviously I'm not favouring one over the other. So anyway it's going to feel like I'm laying the boots in here but this laptop does smack of arrogance and Apple are getting arrogant. They don't listen to what professionals want and they're just telling you what you need and this is the result of that arrogance I believe. And we're talking about the most loyal Apple fans. They just feel that Apple aren't making a computer that is for them anymore. And just check the internet, check YouTube. This is from Apple fans, okay? So, so I think I'm gonna be quite fair on this and I'm not gonna hate on it like a lot of loyal Apple fans that have been disappointed. So first of all, the price. Yeah, it is a bit ridiculous. This is $2,800 US, this model here. That's 4.3K in Australia. That's a fair chunk of change when you consider that. Yes, that XPS 15 that I just showed you before, I can buy one of those, the same spec as this, and buy a smartphone and still have change. The price is ridiculous. Now this model here is the 2.7 gigahertz i7 compared to the XPS 15 over there, which is the 2.6 gigahertz. You can get a faster one than this, but the reality is 2.6 to 2.9. It's not that much of a difference. And if you know about overclocking your CPU, if you overclock your CPU by three, 400 megahertz, it doesn't make that much difference. So if you can, you're probably better off with the 2.7 here rather than going to the 2.9. This has 16 gigabytes DDR3 RAM, so it's not DDR4. And the reason Apple said they've done that is because of power. These are the low powered DDR3 modules. It is what it is, it's DDR3, it's old part. But what's not old is the 512 gigabyte SSD in here, and that thing flies. Sold it on, of course, but it does fly. One of the fastest SSDs you can get. And this one has a Radium Pro 455, two gigabytes. You can get a four gigabyte model too. And that's the Radium Pro 460. There isn't that much difference between the two in terms of speed, but an extra two gigabytes of memory will help in some certain situation. So it comes in at just a touch over four pounds, 1.8 kilos. And compared to the XPS 15, the XPS 15 starts at a lower weight, depending on the configuration, but pretty much the same spec. It is a little bit heavier than this, but we're talking fine margins there. And also, this is 1.5 millimeters thinner than the XPS 15 at its fattest point. Now, both of them are thin and light for a 15 inch laptop, and we're talking millimeters of difference here. And you've got to remember the XPS 15 tapers, so at the thinnest point of the XPS 15, it is thinner than this. Just on the surface, looking at it, I love this color. This is gorgeous, this color. It's a darker gray, it's that space gray. This is all personal preference, of course. This is machined out of aluminium. It's all aluminium this time. Yes, and Johnny Ive says it is aluminium. It's not aluminium. You don't get the glowing Apple logo anymore. You have stainless steel insert there, I believe. That's the bottom there. Thin, light, beautiful. From the outside, it's fit and finish is superb. I do prefer the color over the XPS 15, this darker gray. That's just my personal preference. And I do like the uniform thickness all around. It doesn't taper. And this thing is beautiful too. They are both the benchmark in fit and finish. And I will say fit and finish because from the outside, this looks like it's got the best fit and finish. Build quality is questionable. If you look at Lewis Rossman's website, build quality and fit and finish are two different things. So I can't comment on build quality until we test out how durable this is. But the XPS 15 is definitely built like a tank. So, and I've had it for over a year. We'll see how this holds up over time. Now, if you're gonna 
ask me which one looks better from the outside externally I think maybe the Mac shades it just because of that color I like this color and the uniform thickness I like but it's very close but open it up this thing looks ugly compared to the XPS 15 when you open it first of all it doesn't have the infinity edge bezels I mean it's got small bezels anyway but it doesn't look as slick as the XPS 15 in terms of the bezels there especially when you consider that it's not edge to edge glass you have this bit of metal down here that sort of looks out of place it's sort of un apple like you would expect apple to have edge to edge glass and this be glass here not a piece of metal that doesn't fit flushly that's nitpicking of course but there's one thing that's not nitpicking is this ugly trackpad it just makes things look out of proportion it sort of sets the keyboard back in when you open up the XPS 15 and this MacBook Pro, of course, personal preference is subjective, but I'd find it hard to actually think people think this looks better than the XPS 15 once you open it up with the Infinity Edge, the beautiful carbon fiber finish on the XPS 15, and this ugly thing here just looks ugly. Moving on to ports, you have four Thunderbolt 3 using the USB-C port there. So two on the left and two on the right and a microphone jack and that's it that is it and i guess if you were going to ask me what is the thing that most people are disappointed with this mac is it's those ports and until you use it you won't know how annoying it is and you might think oh you know my device is going to be usb type c or thunderbolt 3 in the next few years but i don't think so it's going to take a while before they become the standard on everything and it really needs a usb 3 and an sd card slot I mean that's a deal breaker for me personally and it is for a lot of people and it's just so annoying I just have an SD card it's like I want to plug it oh, I can't do it there's so many scenarios where I just can't do it because I need a dongle or an adapter and I don't like using dongles or adapters if I don't have to and they force you to do it. arrogance you see just do it our way that's what Apple say and it really is annoying and a lot of people say, well, it's got four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Well, this is the future. But the thing is, it only has 16 gigabytes of RAM maximum. So it's not very future proof when you consider that 6K consumer cameras are coming soon. I know the Panasonic GH5 is going to have 4K at 60 frames per second. 16 gigs is not enough and it's not future proof. So then why would you have future proof ports? But the actual hardware is not future proof. So there's no point having these thunderbolt ports if in a couple of years time 16 gig is not going to be enough and again with the xps 15 you can get up to 32 gigs another thing that's a deal breaker for a lot of people is this keyboard now it is a shocking keyboard <laughs> let me be fair um, you will get used to it there's no doubt about that but why should you have to get used to it it is it annoys me for some reason when I use this keyboard I'm like dyslexic it's not a great experience and it's loud the reason they made it so loud is to fool your mind into actually thinking you're getting more travel than you are it's not a great keyboard and you know I have a Greek mate and you know he tries to attack me from behind all the time now I might get used to that over time but but I don't want to get used to it and it's still gonna hurt even after you get used to it trackpad what are Apple doing here seriously Apple had the best trackpad without a doubt the best okay it was almost perfection on the last MacBook Pros this one here it sounds worse than the other one it actually has a bit of movement in it compared to the last model last model was rock solid picks up my palm sometimes when i type cursor will move right click it, when it works it is brilliant and it can be fixed with software a lot of these problems but going from the best trackpad they've actually regressed and i think maybe they were going to offer pen support or pencil support with this trackpad i don't see any other reason why it would be so big i would still say when it works I would prefer it over the XPS 15, but it's annoying me a lot. So yeah, hopefully they fix that with software. And why mess with perfection, Apple? You've lost the plot. And we'll see if it ends up having pencil support. And that's why they had a massive trackpad like this. But um, I don't want pencil support on my laptop. I just want a great trackpad. And the last model had the best trackpad ever. You've regressed, Apple. You, you've made things worse. So sound. The sound is very good, actually. One of the better things about this laptop. Meaty, rich, clarity, great. 
It is the gold standard in sound at the moment. Let's have a listen to Tony Soprano here. King reviewer, the best reviewer on YouTube. Check him out. Andrew Mark D. That's not his real name. His real name's Tony Soprano. But I was very anxious to upgrade that, but with no offerings from Apple, I had to wait. Well, recently, Apple announced the new 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and Touch ID. I was excited. I ordered it. I have it in hand, and I've been putting it through its paces for the past week. Hi, my name's Andrew from AMD and Tech, and this is the review is. of the 2016. Thanks, Tony. So yeah, you have no complaints with the sound there. Cracking sound. The display, gorgeous. Absolutely stunning display here. I have done a display comparison between the XPS 15 and this. You can check that out, check that video out. Definitely if you're a consumer, you'll love this. It's very bright, vivid, color accurate, high resolution. It's, um, it's a 15.4 inch screen, 2880 by 1800. Great viewing angles. You'll be very happy with this display, but pairing it to the XPS 15, it does fall short. It's 100% P3 color gamut there. The XPS 15 is 100% Adobe RGB, so it has a wider color gamut than this. And you also get a 4K screen on the XPS 15, so that's great for people that want to watch, I don't know, 4K Netflix content, or even just see their 4K content in a one-to-one -one preview. So it would be great if there was a 4K option of this, and had a wider color gamut it is what it is it's still a fantastic display don't get me wrong there and it is a 16 by 10 ratio so you will have black bars on the top and bottom if you're watching youtube content or whatever battery life Ooh, okay so this is on mac os x 10.12.2 so i have had the latest update and i'm not getting nowhere near the 10 hours seven hours to be fair i do use chrome when i use this because i can't use safari you'll probably get a little bit more if you use safari um seven hours it's good i mean seven hours is good for me for a 15 inch with a high resolution screen like this but you're not getting the claim 10 that apple claim and if you have the 4k xps 15 where you get around five maybe six if you're lucky um, it does have longer battery life than the 4k model if you compare it to the xps 15 1080p model you fall in the you know quite a few hours short there like over four hours short of what the full hd does on the xps 15. it's not killer battery for a high res play like this is seven hours is nothing to sneeze out there it's pretty good but apple claim 10 and usually apple claims are pretty good but um even with the update i'm not getting near 10. performance yeah this is another point where people have complained a lot about it using skylake parts which the xps 15 is over a year old now and it has skylake parts virtually the same parts this one here is clocked slightly faster at 2.7 versus 2.6 on the xps 15 but the xps 15 is coming out with cabby lake and a 1050 ti graphics card and it's going to be out within weeks so these are last generation parts apart from the ssd and the display other than that this is the old Skylake part. Yes, the graphics card is new. The Radon 455 in this, and you can get the four gigabyte 460, but they're not very powerful compared to, the, to even the year old GTX 960M in the XPS 15. I will be doing a full performance comparison compared to the XPS 15 in like, you know, like for like applications. I've done a render test. If you want to look at the render test versus the XPS 15, check that video out. And it is faster, the XPS 15 because of that graphics card. Depends what software you're using, of course, but I'm gonna test like-for-like -like applications in both of them, and I'm gonna use OpenGL in Unigen Heaven, Unigen Valley. I'm gonna test it with Rocket League, CSGO, Civilization 6, Geekbench, Cinebench, all those sort of applications. And I can just tell you now, Cinebench it wins because this is a 2.7, but every other benchmark there, it loses. And some of them are shocking, like you play Civilization 6 with this, um, 1080p just medium settings you know 12 15 frames per second that's uh, just shocking compared to the xps which you know which plays civilization 6 butter smooth at 1080p medium settings so and the scores in csgo rocket league and unigen it's slower than the xps 15 in every instance so i guess if you're using the apple applications like final cut most apple people won't care they'll think it performs good enough 
but if you're comparing it to its main competitor, the XPS 15 there, well, it does fall short in the performance part, and it's mostly because of that. Graphics card is not as good as the XPS 15. The process is the same virtually, but it's let down by the graphics. And this is again, Apple being arrogant, you know, they cannot make Nvidia bend over, and they can't have the control over Nvidia that they want. So they use AMD graphics instead and they're selling their customers short they're not giving them the best graphics card and when you consider this is much more expensive than its competitors with much better hardware it's hard to swallow that and again if you're using the apple applications you're going to get a great performance here but only 16 gigabytes ram is not enough for me for a professional especially considering what's coming out you know 4K, 60 frames per second consumer camera, 6K is on the horizon. 16 gigs is not going to be enough in the next few years. SSD, super fast, no complaints there. It's up there with even the 960 Pro in terms of speed, but you cannot upgrade it. So when the 970 Pro comes out next year, you won't be able to put it in this and the ram is soldered on too so 16 gigs is all you're going to get now i will show you a video so you can hear the noise it does get a bit hot and i'll just mention now i think it's still with the graphics card that has crashed quite a lot on me it's locked up um, i have to force quit things all the time um, a lot of people are complaining about this there's something to do with the video card i'll give them a little bit of an out here because if you remember the Skylake based PCs last year, they were having heaps of problems with flickering and drivers with the Intel HD graphics. Because this is a new graphics card, I'll give them a couple of months, but hopefully they sort out that. At the moment, it is a bit buggy, and I think it's to do with the graphics card there. And hopefully it's driver issues, not hardware. So the touch bar is annoying to me because I have to press that, two taps, and then start messing with the brightness, or you can actually just tap and then swipe but it's still it's two movements if i'm actually going to take my hands off the keyboard and palm rest and then start reaching here i might as well reach there to the screen and the reality is when i use my laptop i kick back on the lounge or something like that i can't even see the touch bar because it's that far away now if you're hunched over your keyboard well maybe it might be useful to you but this has locked up and I couldn't force quit when it locked up because the escape button is on the touch bar. So I'm not a fan of the touch bar. It's just a gimmick to me. I don't use it, so whatever. So anyway, overall, I cannot recommend this unless you're cashed up and you don't care that it only has 16 gigs RAM and you're not worried about performance, you're in the Apple ecosystem and money's no object and you're not worried about the ports and you just want a fantastic laptop because this is a great laptop if it's not a professional laptop. It is fantastic. If you take price out of it, the ports, and that it's not a professional laptop and you just based it on a pure laptop just for normal consumers, this is fantastic. But the reality is it costs a fortune. Those ports are an issue. It's not a professional laptop for professionals. It's more for consumers. It's an appliance. It's not a professional computer there. And if you're disappointed with all these things, which a lot of Mac people are, if you want to know what the best laptop to get Windows wise, it's the XPS 15. And I would say now, wait until the next model comes out, which is only going to be a couple of weeks. It's going to have a GTX 1050. It's going to have Kaby Lake quad core processors. The same great display. I mean, the current XPS 15 blows this away. So I hate to think what the new one will do to this. Absolutely batter it. But that being said, Apple can give this 32 gigs RAM, put a USB and SD card and then they're back in the game. But will Apple do that? Don't think so. Maybe the 32 gig in the future, but they're not adding an SD card slot to this. They're not putting a normal USB there. And I don't think they're offering a 4K screen anytime soon. So consumer laptop, awesome, professional, no good. So that's it guys. I'd like to really thank you for watching. I hope you think I haven't been too hard on it, but I've got to tell it like it is, okay? I can't lie to you. I hope you all have a great holidays. And if you're new around here, be a champ. Why not subscribe? Give me a thumbs up. That helps me out enormously, guys. And until next time, guys, probably next year, tally ho.